development phase of it. Mr. Martin, if you will present, please, VA 2017-11. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a plan development request for two properties of land um, to redevelop them under our 10 zone. Um, this is a development consisting of 17 dwelling units, um, either a single family detached or a single family attached. Our definitions and descriptions of those are there in your packet. I won't go into a whole lot of link in the presentation. I think the applicants really wanted to describe some of that to you, but there's a lot of information here contained in your packet. But to go through this, um, to make this, uh, to differentiate this from the previous request, this now includes the property 316 Eagle Road, which was already zoned R10. So it's both of them together. Um, some of you may recall a master plan that was approved about four years ago for just the 316. Um, that was for eight houses on a narrow configuration of a, sort of a winding dead end road. Um, it's the same applicants this time, but the prior project never did materialize. The plan development did expire. And they're not now coming back through the process to consider a plan development again, very similar to the one before, but under a different design. Um, character area issues are still the same, established residential. Uh, all forms of you know, residential zoning are allowed and development. Um, aerial, you now see the two properties with the pattern of development that is around it. And the survey, which shows the larger acreage of land. And of course, the same subject properties. Um, what is different here is, is the proposed master plan, and to point some of the features out here, there it shows 18 parcels of land, but is 17 dwelling units. One of these parcels is a designated common area for open space and its stormwater management. The proposed street system you see is proposed as a private road system um, with a more narrow pavement width of about 20 or 24 feet. Um, this is more like the Cherokee Plantation development up near the Country Club. It is a similar type road design, although with much shorter streets. The scale here is somewhat deceiving. The small cul-de-sacs that you see are not conventional sized cul-de-sacs. They are much smaller. They are meant as turnarounds for passenger vehicles only, not emergency vehicles. But the scale is somewhat deceiving. These cul-de-sac streets that are at the bottom of the screen are only about 80 feet long. They're not very deep. Um, compared to how they look. The only one that's a little bit longer is the one that goes off to the left, which is back into the northern part of the property, and that is dealt with with some of the conditions that are here in the packet. You see where there are some houses that are uh, connected together, that is what we call single family attached, the sort of a townhouse style or a villa style of development. It's one building under one roof, but with two dwelling units with a property line separating them with a the firewall. So it is individual ownership on each side. Um, what this does is it gives them the 17 dwelling units, uh, but it has 13 rooftops. So it's a little bit different kind of pattern, um, hopefully not looking quite as dense as the 17. Um, the proposal, of course, is the private road system on meandering, short cul-de-sac streets, um, different floor plans, sort of an offset pattern of houses. Um, a, fenced area all the way around the perimeter to include a 10-foot buffer uh, with the solid fencing to help separate this from some of the neighboring development. <coughs> and then you see the stormwater management on the south end of the property toward the road. Um, architectural styles, this is not exact elevations of what they're proposing, but they're uh, wanting to build these homes in what I call a vernacular craftsman style, uh, similar to some of these houses that are on the screen. You may recognize these drawings as being the same things that we saw about four years ago um, with individual homes. And then this is, we asked to, since there were two um, unit dwellings, to show what that might look like under similar style. So this one is a new building design. Floor plans, these are two different ones that we saw four years ago, um, but with garages. Um, and you notice that they are a little over 1,500 square feet in heated air. And these are not small homes, um, but sort of medium-sized houses that fit on the lots. And with that, of course, the zoning issues have already been discussed, but this is simply a plan development. Um, one of the overriding issues with the design is that of access to Eagle Road. For these two parcels of land to be subdivided or developed independently, you would have two driveways onto Eagle, 
one that lines up with Longwood Circle, which is what you see here at the top of the screen, and that's the 316 gigabyte. For 318 to be developed independently, it would need its own street to intersection onto Eager in a very bad position on Eager Road between the two streets, not a very safe distance. Uh, because of the deep nature of these lots, it really begs for plan development. Um, like we talked about a few moments ago with 318 being a very large land area, but not enough frontage to really subdivide into what would be conventional R10 or R15 lots. There's really, if there's a way to feasibly put in a, an internal street system, there is room here to have multiple houses. And that's what they're proposing. Rather than eat up a lot of land with extra pavement that you see in a typical subdivision, they are proposing non-conventional development where it's a smaller road, small traffic volumes from this development. It's just a few houses on each cul-de-sac to conserve space, to have more open space, not so much pavement. And from all of our discussions about planned developments in the past, that's what it is for. It's for flexibility of design, something non-conventional um, that you can develop a clustered type form of residential housing. And that's what they're proposing here. Uh, personally, I think this is a lot better layout than what we saw a few years ago. The extra width of the property gives a lot more flexibility in design. Otherwise, it's very similar um, based on what we saw before. Uh, SNAP is recommending approval of this plan development request subject to several conditions. There's actually 14 of them. Um, ignore the typos on the last three. But many of these conditions uh, carry over from the previous request from four years ago. If you'd like, I could go through all four of for the benefit of the audience. Uh, we'll try. All right. Condition number one. Approval shall be granted for all residential for all residential plan development in accordance with the submitted uh, master plan. is basically to spell out that no more than 17 dwelling units. Um, have them each on their own parcel of land um, rather than building plan type development and then restricted uses to single family residential only or home occupations that do not generate traffic. This would preclude the possibility of other uses that are in zoning which might otherwise include a home daycare center or a personal care home or a couple of small institutional uses. Um, the main thinking there is to be more dense single family development, there's just not room to have some of these other things that generate a little bit more traffic. Number two, all dwelling units shall be limited to one story and contain a minimum heated floor area of 1,500 square feet. At least two different basic floor plans shall be utilized in a mixed pattern with variable architectural details along the streetscape. There shall be no more than two buildings having an identical front facade design. Exterior design features shall be vernacular craftsman style as represented by the submitted sample drawings. The use of vinyl siding shall be prohibited. All yards shall be irrigated and professionally landscaped by the uh, time of home completion. This is a carryover from four years ago. Number three, all buildings shall observe a minimum building setback of at least 10 feet from all external property lines of the development and six feet from all interior property lines and pavement edges. Number four, the development shall connect to city water and sewer services the big looped water system design that connects to existing veins of both Eager Road and Simpson Place as approved by the city engineer. The unused portions of the existing 20-foot utility easement along the eastern boundary of the development shall be abandoned and vacated before approval of the development's final plan. This is not a carryover for four years ago. This is a new comment based on the review of this plan. And what has happened since four years ago is the Annex Island areas for the neighborhood to the north has now been connected to the city's water and sewer system. And there is a stub out water line immediately behind this property off to the northeast that the city engineer and utilities are going to like this to tie into. So you have a looped water system through here, not another dead end water line. And number five, the development shall include restricted covenants and a property owners association that is responsible for the proper maintenance of all common areas, shared roadway, stormwater facilities, entrance features, and internal landscape. Number six, the shared access drive shall be a main, privately owned, and maintained roadway in the form of a shared access and public utility easement across each lot. The pavement shall be asphalt with the width of at least 24 feet near the entrance of Eagle Road and at least 20 feet elsewhere. 
sidewalk sh uh, shall be omitted, and the curb gutter shall be deemed optional. The roadway shall otherwise be constructed to city standards as approved by the city engineer. Here's an important item on this. The northernmost cul-de-sac shall instead be designed and constructed as a Y-shaped emergency vehicle turnaround as approved by the city fire marshal. Maintenance of the roadway shall be with the private, uh, property owners association and or the collective property owners in perpetuity. That master plan you see has the northernmost cul-de-sac. Fire marshal has specifically requested that be uh, changed to the Y-shaped turnaround, which is what we saw four years ago. A similar pole sack going up into the north again. The drive for that roadway is right at the threshold of requiring a turnaround. In fact, it's just short of it. But the fire marshal has requested that so, in case the fire vehicle gets up there, we have a better way to turn around. Um, personally, I think this facilitates the driveway access for those two homes a little better, anyway. kind of like it did. Moving on, number seven, the internal roadway shall include decorative street lights and grouped mailboxes. There shall be no on-street parking allowed, except for temporary loading or unloading for the residents. Number eight, in lieu of individual garbage cans, the development shall include a shared dumpster facility <coughs> that is located in the center of the development adjacent to the larger roundabout. The dumpster area shall be gated and fully screened from view with opaque fencing or wall. Access design for the dumpster shall be approved by the public works group. The basic design they have is the roads coming from either a little bit wider. That central roundabout will accommodate emergency vehicles making the, the loop, um, and that includes the garbage trucks. The side roads are not quite wide enough to accommodate turnaround, so this allows all of these vehicles to get the access they need. All right, number nine, the perimeter of the development shall include a solid opaque wooden privacy fence planted buffer area. Except for the southernmost 30 feet near Eagle Road, the fence shall be at least 8 feet high, and the fence shall be finished on both sides. The perimeter buffer area shall include a minimum of five small and one canopy tree, all evergreens, for 100 linear feet as approved by the city arbors. Buffer area landscaping shall be integrated into the design of other landscaping for each development uh, without necessary separation between the buffer area and the adjacent buildings. Number 10, the development's frontage along Eagle Road shall include only the shared private roadway and no other entrance drive. The piping of the existing ditch in the road, as well as the decorative landscape entrance or burn and fencing of trees is approved by the city arbors. There shall be no more than one entrance sign for the development. There shall be a non-illuminated monument sign, not to exceed six feet of height or 32 square feet in size. And that's a carryover for four years. Number 11, development of the project shall commence within two years and be completed within five years. Otherwise, plan development approval shall automatically expire. Right, and Mr. Chairman, I would ignore the ones after that. That is editing years. Okay. Thanks, Matt, for taking your time doing that. All right, commissioners, any questions for Matt on this application here? So the designation would have remained 
compatible with the existing established neighborhood without having to go to the R10 and create that, again, another right. sort of spot zoning. And so I was just curious to see if that approach had been sort of... It had been discussed early on, but also note that the R10 property at 316 was rezoned four neighbor. years ago. Right. And so adding on a little bit of R15 density, there wasn't much difference in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, and my part of all of those are back in my office um, as I move beyond that since we're looking at R10. But the, in my head, it's the difference between 14 and 17. Uh, 14 is the straight up density for R10, and 17 is the maximum. And that's where the recommendation, and of course the layout matches this, that we reduce the number of buildings to more reflect the straight up number 14, in this case 13 buildings. 17 So the idea is to share some of the rooftops between two dwellings. So I have two other questions if I may. Um, what about guest parking? How has that been addressed with this plan? It has not. Um, it, the only concern is not to have parking on the street. Um, there would need to be some spaces provided in the driveways or elsewhere. Maybe a separate turnouts on the road, which is what we had in the plan four years ago. Oh, my last question for now is that how, how was the 10 foot minimum rear setback achieved? Or actually, it's not, it's not rear, it says from the property, the external The external property, property which is around the perimeter. If you look at the master plan. Well, not achieved. How was that determined? How was it? Is that, is that a typical? land regulation in our um, standards? It, it is not. It is actually one of the deviations under our 10 development. Um, it's a smaller rear yard setback. Um, and it's because of the layout plan, if, if you look at the arrangement of buildings, to bring the buildings in closer or move them away from the fence, it shortens the driveways to a distance that there's really no longer function to have driveways. And that is why the recommendation has been to increase the fence size from six feet to eight feet. Uh, four years ago, the recommendation was a six foot fence. Now it's an eight foot fence. And that is partly because of the reduced number. Um, if you were to compare the plan from four years ago, which is also in your packet, there were a couple houses that were at 10 feet from the external line. Most of the others were 20 or more feet. And in this particular case, most of these perimeter houses are at 10 feet mainly at corners. You know, that was a request that I made. If it was going to be 10 foot in distance, let's try and minimize that as much as possible. I wanted to know, as the fire department said grace over the steep rest and Yes, so there's been lots of discussion, even as of late on Friday. Um, like I shared with you the work session, I've had conversations and follow-up conversations and follow-ups to the follow-up um, with the fire department, engineering department, and utilities, or actually public works department, and utilities. Um, fire department has approved this. The so request from the fire marshal is to change that northernmost cul-de-sac to a Y-shaped turnaround. Other than that, they are fine with it. Um, the same thing with the other departments. Is it going to be on the last device shape? Correct. If you're looking here, there's a drawing that has more than one. And almost the exact same location. Mr. Foster. Matt, um, I noticed one change from the last time was from six small and two canopy trees per 100 linear feet of the 10 foot buffer down to five and one. Is there any? Reason to not, if you look, you compare current number nine to the old number seven, which you said is required. Seems that that's gotten a little bit lower. It's intended to be the same. Also mentioned the 36 shrubs uh, in the older some page three up here.
the requirement that was approved four years ago was by a small one canopy tree. And so that still matches number nine on the recommendation. <coughs> I'm just looking on the same page as number nine, but number seven at the bottom. Right. But you said that is actually from a different request. Oh, it is. Is there any reason why it could not be six and two in the very six row to give a little more buffer on the ten feet exterior? You can. Um, you can make that as a recommendation. The one concern is is not the shrubs is not view very critical there. It's really the tree factor. Uh, but in a 10-foot wide strip, you have a little, not a whole lot of room to work with. Um, my main concern there was that the landscaping in that upper area along the fence be integrated into the landscaping around the road. Still allow walkways and things to move through. There's no, it's not a conventional buffer yard um, because of, to me, the 8-foot tall solid fence really separates the uses. And to me, it's the trees that actually help out there. So I would, if you want to increase the trees, you could. It's just with these, the narrow strip, there's not a whole lot for to work. And some trees really should not be too close to there. At the work session, we had not seen anything about the <coughs> dumpster area, and now it's at the center of the development. Correct. That was an item that came out on Friday from the Public Works Director. Um, <laughs> There was some discussion in the work session about how this project might have sanitation service, either as roll-off containers individual, like we have for many neighborhoods, versus a shared facility. The concern was with the unusual configuration of these roads, the roll-offs might be impractical. Um, and the Public Works Department thinks a shared facility would work a lot better, but it would need to be in that center roundabout for the construction service. I guess I'm just concerned that if you're trying to do a upper scale, you know, track retirees or track young professionals, and you've got a big dumpster area right in the focal point of the development, that it's going to attract a different company. That's why you would need to do your best to screen it, landscape it, make it look better than what some of them do. That, but that is the only part of the development where the truck will get into service. So by putting it specifically on conditions being the center, I mean, if there was a place, say, on the entrance road between, mm -hmm. between Eager and the center turnaround, that they could put it, and wouldn't that be a, I don't know if they're, you know, they're not in the final, I guess, complete development, because this doesn't show the line on the backside. But you see what I'm saying? Sure. I, mean, I, I hate to condition that and then there be a better place. Um, and the only other possible place is on that entrance road adjacent to lot number 18. Right. But as you come into the development, you're looking to square into it. Um, and it's also less centrally located for the residents. So the idea was to get it a little bit off of the center view, but somewhere near the middle of the development so it can be more convenient. And so really looking at lot 12 or lot 7 is the possible locations, knowing that some of those buildings may need to shift over a little bit. Uh, personally, I, if it were me, I would use lot 7. Um, next issue, <clears throat> and, and I have to say I'm generally in favor of this kind of development because we've got to make most of our land use in our desirable areas, but it, it concerns me that the attached to single family element and there being no provisions for condominium restrictions and how that's generally going to work between if you have two separate owners owning one building with a roof that goes over the whole thing. I mean there's no provision in here that there be condo elements that there be you know, there's there's a there's a property owner association or a strict covenant but when you start attached to single family that gets into a different Right, and you'd have to probably reflect that in the deeds for those individual lots. See, but the idea from a building code perspective is those would be fire separated dwelling units with the fire wall that goes all the way to the roof and completely separated. So does that need to be in our conditions because given the, given the proposed picture or whatever? It, it's under the single family attached, and that's how staff addresses it that way. First, the idea is that these would be individual owned, completely separated units. 
um, as opposed to a rental duplex or something where you don't have a firewall. Okay. Might have helped me that address. No, no. You can almost think of it as a two unit tower. That. Um, one of the gentlemen that spoke talked about the water runoff. Does this detention facility that they show on either side of the entrance driveway, will that address any type of water runoff that they're currently experiencing? They have not engineered the site yet, but okay. from their engineer discussion, they believe that is the lower end of the property that would likely accommodate detention. Offhand, I do not think they would need to be quite that big. It depends on the design. They might be able to spread some of that around a little bit. Um, but it's part of the regular development and plan review. If there's um, water coming in from other properties, they have to address that as part of the engineering design of this, as well as the water exiting this property. So the quasi-type ditch that runs through the property, and that will be, I'm assuming, filled in, and then the water will be filled It would have to be dealt with. That is the input of water coming in at the northeast corner, but actually the northern corners of the property. They would have to deal with it through drainage. Um, my guess is they would probably route it to the east and tie it into the road system. So that's something they would have to do regardless of how this property gets developed. All right. And then my second question uh, kind of ties back in um, with Celine's question was the guest parking. Um, is there any way we could make a condition for some type of common area parking? I've seen several uh, developments like this where we do have guest parking in invariably going to parking up kind of on the side of the curbing or in front yards because the driveways can accommodate all the guests. Correct. Um, would that be something that we could recommend? Would be a common parking area? It is. Thank you. Can I come in? Just follow up actually to the Mr. Bell had made some comments. As far as parking, it doesn't seem that the parking criteria has been already addressed. We're, I'm sure that there's going to be. There is all of these units are three bedrooms. So I don't know what is the required parking for this development. And clearly, that's not fully. There are no parking requirements for single family or two family dwellings. So it's just. It's just strict, you know, you have a driveway. It's correct. Correct. Um, not even required to have a garage. So, so this plan may, is going to go through some changes just because of the amenities that are going to be required to be, for example, the garbage dumpster as well as the, the mailboxes. They're going to have to come up with a way that's easy for the garbage to be able to access that. And most likely, they're not going to be going to put it in the middle of the roundabout, which is well, the gate for anything. Right. It was thought to be the middle of the roundabout, but in on the exactly. middle roundabout as opposed to these three that are on the front. But in theory, we are not really recommending approval or disapproval of this plan exactly as it is shown to us, are we? We're recommending approval of something similar to this in terms of similar layout with these parameters that are laid out in the conditions, which require a few little modifications to the plan itself. Noting that everything still has to go through full plan review and subdivision review processes. And it's sort of what we did four years ago. That proposed plan development went through a subdivision review process. And that's as far as it got. But that's where they had an engineer brought in. They looked at the fine details of how things exactly are laid right out, including storm. Can there be no more questions for staff at this time? We will entertain anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request for come forward at this time. I'll call that the way forward to road. Um, several items I guess here to kind of have to discuss. Um, first of all, the water seems to be a hot topic, and that, that's fine. Um, while we do take some deviations to the city standards of development, which you're very well aware of, um, water is not really one of them. We are bound by, um, you know, the, the topo has been determined, and it does slope all the way all sides of the property from the from the north side to the south side of the Eagle Road, which will help us greatly in managing the water that comes on there. Um, we will be routing and deviating the water patterns to the um, detention facility. 
facilities as well as to the uh, city sewer drain along Eagle Road. Um, we do intend to have some impervious parking surfaces, uh, so I'll address the parking now too. These uh, units do have plans for two car garages in each of them, as well as two car parking pads outside of the garage, the driveway, essentially. And we uh, have explored making the driveway impervious parking pavers that allow the grass to grow through um, to help with some water runoff and just, you know, Herbies. Herbies, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and that's just you never said. So uh, as far as the water and the parking, we do feel like we've got it that under control. Um, I will like to correct somebody said there are thirty thousand cars a day on Eagle Road. We checked uh, today there are ten thousand cars at the last second. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we, that, that actually we verified it while we were sitting in this meeting. But um ten thousand cars and it's a collector road and it's designed to handle seventeen additional uh, units here. Uh, it's also said that my family or I wouldn't want this in my neighborhood. I intend to possibly live here. I'll be an empty mess for sure than I care to be. So um you know I've got in laws and uh, other people who are considering to move here. So um we plan to make it nice and again the governments will address a lot of what we do, our upscale finishes, no vinyl siding, um, you know a, a good full plan of um, also, um, Brad, we did talk about the condo. I know that's a, I know that is a concern. Um, we market other properties that just have a common wall and good place for the roof and tree falls on it and that kind of thing. Um, through collaboration with Matt, it really was his idea to go to the um, to the shared common wall, which is fine. <coughs> uh, I think we could find a little better product, and um, so we will have to address the, the kind of issue. Um, in regards to the um, the request from the city fire marshal, as well as the, the uh, trash, Matt, with all due respect, we received an email from you with that request on Friday at 6.38 p.m., so we've not had adequate time uh, to address uh, that with our engineer as far as the parking realignment. It appears to me that there may be room, just a little bit of the land there. Um, <laughs> Ask that to be removed from the request at this moment. We do meet city uh, code as far as the length of the cul de sac. Fire trucks will back down 150 feet and their hose will reach 150 feet. So they told us that as long as it's not more than 300 feet, we should be okay, which we are. We're less than 300 feet here on that main cul de sac. Um, so that's why we need a little more time to be able to commit to that, you know, that requirement that's been put in here. Uh, there's been no discussion on the need an engineering uh, opinion. And as far as the track, you say that requirement, the Y, 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 and I had the same I, I, discussions I, I, with the fire department, but they well, specifically yeah. requested that nonetheless. Right, and, and we'll do what we can to, you know, see about accommodating the request. I, I would not like that to have to it now. Um, as far as the trash, too, that was a new illness. Um, you know, in general, it would not be good to have a centralized location. Um, the loss of the standard in the city, and um, you know, I'm about to on the curb right now, and it's very functional. Um, so, again, I would, I would ask that that condition, that was also given to us late Friday afternoon at 6 38, so we not that time to really plan for that. We do go with the roll offs, or if you guys go with the roll offs, um, that northernmost with the with the garbage truck be able to get down in there and back. Yeah, the, you know the turnaround is probably um, 
shooting the arrow for them to turn around fully, but and that's the same for fire fire pit. They can't turn around, they have to turn around and then they go back and back. back. So if the garbage truck was to come in there, then they wouldn't actually physically drive down these right. they tentacles. They would drive down, you know, a portion of it and then you go on. that comes down to number four there. Do you have any idea what the length of that cold is like? any right-of-way acquisition as part of that project. Either road's an 80-foot right-of-way, right. 
that can accommodate a pretty wide road. The proposal is to three lane it. Right. And 80 feet will accommodate a four lane. Well, my problem with that is if you've ever been around the curve on Jerry Jones near the dam when they have three lane it, I couldn't tell you how many times I've slipped you on this. It's just a better block now. With the congestion of more neighborhoods coming in and out of this area, it's going to look pretty difficult for me. Um, You were talking about the trash, the trash truck picking up there. It seems like to me they're probably going to have to back in to that neighborhood. And we're going to have to hear that trash truck beep every morning coming through that neighborhood on Monday. They're going to hear beep, beep, beep. Mr. Pack is for record pie number 17. I know he's not going to be in favor of the trash can being put anywhere near his house. So your common thing on the trash is a good point. I have one other question about the property at 310 Eager Road, which is on my top of the asylum. It's uh, zone R10. It's the same exact track size as the one that you have already approved. Mm -hmm. Go to the right hand side of Jadan, right where it says Eager Road, where it says RD. Mm -hmm. That is Dr. Rosalo's property. It is the same diameter as the very first track that you approved as R15. What's going to stop Dr. Rosal from doing the same thing to his property from putting more homes on either road? Because if you let one person do it, you got to let the other guy do it too. So I have a little bit of a problem with that. But that also being said, if this does go through, we'd like to know if uh, 317 and 315 would be on the table. something when you spoke last time uh, about property values. You said that you have bought yours for six seven thousand on the corner sold for forty two recently. Yes. Sir. What, what, what would if these are going to sell fifteen hundred square foot for under or what what what's the plan to get if this would not go through, what would be the plan to get your property values up? I don't really care about property values up. I, I want to die. I, I don't I don't want to ever leave that's why I'm going to slice the head. I, I, don't want to, I don't care if my house is worth more or less. This is where I chose to live. I want to try to protect it from anything else coming in around and really crowd this out. I just see too much of a like, blue pool area. You know, other subdivisions have not succeeded. There's so much rental property right now. Homes are selling ballast to that. Are <coughs> even being sold? They're being auctioned off. My house was bought at an auction. I, did, I didn't buy it for a sale by owner. I didn't buy it from a realty company. I saw the auctions. And I was the only person to get in my home. The only person. And there's so many properties. There's a gentleman here that has two for sale now. He just, he just can't get people to buy. I'm sure houses are selling, but why can't we just take care of what we've already got? I understand that we need to utilize as much of our land in the best way that we can, but a city without limits, there's got to be some limits. You know, you just keep putting people on top of people and putting people on top of people. If you're going to force us to move to the county, then where is your taxes going to come from? You know, property taxes. Nobody wants a house of 10 feet in the property line. 10 feet? That's as close as I am to you guys. That would be the next house where you're sitting. That's why I moved from where I was at originally, because it was an R10. And that's on uh, West Park Avenue. <coughs> and it has just totally become nothing but college rentals. The people who have built these houses in the late 50s, early 60s, are getting up in years. And they're not able to take care of the homes that they have. So therefore, they're forcing the sell them. These gentlemen were born to build a retirement villa. This would be something that would assist them and help them. But now we're here in single family. So there's no limits. There's, how's there going to be a homeowners association when there's no one in charge? 
you're just building lots and selling houses. We're just trailing as tight as you can. Why can't we widen the Eagle Road first? And let's see how much traffic increases. Look what's happened to Guarantou. So nice that we were able to four lane it, but then we had to two lane. So all those people live on Guarantou are faced with all this traffic. I would love to hear the ladies uh, report again on how much traffic truly comes through that road. I believe she was correct. So, you know, I don't understand why we couldn't ride meager first, see if that's going to increase the traffic off of Guarantou, pull more traffic down on it. And if it does, there's no reason to build another subdivision going on that road. Eight, 17 houses out of student, you're just they're adding more and more and more. And you're just putting them right on top of us. We bought in this area because it was an R15. We want to keep it an R15. We don't want an R10. <coughs> if we wanted to live in an R10, we would have bought and built in an R10. There's some nice, beautiful lots out right there, guys. Just beautiful places. I don't want to get into nature as far as habitat and stuff like that. But I love the little family of rabbits that live in my backyard. I, it's, I would rather watch them than TV. And you just take one more acre from us. It's called one more destruction. It's just going to be so hard for us. Nice little place to die. It's a beautiful area, guys. It's just, you know, no traffic. We walk down the streets. No traffic. Morning, evening, no traffic. It's, it's a great subdivision. But if you're going to put single family in, there's, there's no limitation on people. Anybody and the drawings are beautiful. Well, let's throw a couple of bicycles out in the yard and skateboard and tilt the trash can. Somebody didn't water plants. Like if there's anybody else here who likes scan on this thing, I would do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Don't come on, now's the time. We can be. Very brief. We've exceeded our time by about 10 minutes on this side. Very brief. Amen. 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 Community dumpster. That's just, a, not sanitary. 
and not aesthetically pleasing. Can I, can I say just something for two seconds? You won't take me that long, I promise. Please hurry because okay. we've exhausted this way over. Well, no, not if you live in this area, it's not exhausted. Well, it's exhausted on the time that we have okay. lockers. So. Well, my name is Sandy Burkett, 409 Georgetown Circle. This is the first that I've heard this in the last few <coughs> days. But one thing that I thought about while listening tonight, is there somebody that you could put in the provision that when they do have their um, restrictions and bylaws written up, that whoever buys the house has to live in the house. And there is a couple of neighborhoods in our town that have provisions in there that there's no renters. Is there a way that they could do that? That there's no renters in the neighborhood, in the little area, like Huntington Ridge, I think they had some at one time, they let it lapse. <coughs> Uh, Farmington Court, you know, I'll have renters in there. It's just something that they could look at and put in the restrictions and the bylaws to guard this area. If you're going to pass this, to protect the people that are going to live in this house. We live in Georgetown. We would like to have more houses with owners, but it's all turning to renters now. We live on a very small street. And there's a whole lot of traffic. And you're not allowed to park in the streets. <clears throat> and the parking block uh, pads on our houses are small. You end up having people parking on the grass. So there's a lot of problems when you have a small area for cars and trucks to go into like you're looking at. Just a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, to come forward tonight, commissioners. Any discussion among ourselves on this? There be none. At this time, I will take a motion on case number B 2017 111. It's what's planned to melt the Congo by Congo LLC. Thank you. Chairman, I'll move we recommend approval to the county, to the city commission uh, of the plan development with the 11, uh, excuse me, with conditions 1 through 7 and 9, 10, and 11. And on condition 6, we strike the sentence, the northernmost cul-de-sac shall instead be designed and restricted as a Y-shaped emergency vehicle turnaround as approved by the city car park. So we would have conditions 1 through 7, 9 through 11 with a strike of that sentence of number 6. Is that includes just a quick uh, question about 45 and 638 Friday? Okay. okay, guys, we have a motion from Mr. Bolson of approval. Need a discussion before I ask for a second on this? Could you repeat the motion? I'm sorry, which, which conditions is said 1 through? 1 through 7. 9 through 11 and strike the sentence in number 6, the second to last sentence, beginning the northernmost cause. So the two conditions that were missed, number 7, 8, 9, the eight, eight are those. Okay. Thank you. Any discussion on this? Is there a motion to approve the So we have to be, but it's part of the approval process before that development state. Because there's deviation that get approved as part of it, that would carry over into the like, final approval process. So along with water situations and like this. Okay. I can make sure we, we do have a motion from Commissioner Post approval with the uh, with the condition of the conditions as he stated. This time I'll be looking for a second on this motion. I'll second it, Mr. Holmes. Just a second, Mr. Holmes. At this time, I'll ask for a second by the right hand for approval in the motion. Mm -hmm. So we'll let that expire. No abstain. No negatives. Uh, 